It was here at the Victoria Concert Hall 10 years ago that Rossini's Barber of Serville opened the inaugural concert of the Singapore Symphony Orchestra. Since then, the National Orchestra has had over 500 concerts here. To many concert goers, this place is very much the SSO's home. Tonight, as the SSO celebrates in a gala performance, we take this opportunity to look at its record of the last 10 years and the years ahead for the orchestra which plays for a nation. I think uh, if you compare from the beginning, you see, it has reached uh, quite a, a remarkable level of uh, playing. I think it's wonderful for a country like Singapore to have a professional orchestra. But honestly, I don't often leave a concert feeling deeply moved or excited. Uh, the SSO today I would rate as a competent orchestra. Uh, occasionally they are more than competent and very occasionally there are signs of inspiration. An inspiration for some comes quite early in life. When the SSO was first formed, Lim Soon Lee was just 19 years old and performing with the Singapore Youth Orchestra. Today, working as a violinist with the SSO, he's part of Singapore's small pool of performing musicians. Practice sessions in string quartets like this one help musicians to get a feel of playing a piece in a group, with each player benefiting from the other's input. The rich sounds of the combined strings is also a welcome change from the routine of individual practice every day. After everyday works, I come back and first uh, what I do is to practice the orchestra part because uh, and, uh, I practice at least two hours a day. Of course, when I'm young, I used to practice eight hours a day. But now, yeah, some other job, the, the commitment I have to do, like teaching, so I have less time, but uh, uh, still I have to practice. But for every performing musician like Soon Lee, there are many other individuals also active on the music scene. But often, it's music very different from the sound of the SSO. students from the Hua Chong Junior College get together twice to three times a week to practice together in a Chinese orchestra. Hua Chong has had a Chinese orchestra for the last 15 years. The opportunities for them to perform are numerous as there are many who are familiar with Chinese classical music and seize any opportunity to listen to it. For many Singaporeans, learning a traditional instrument is encouraged. It's one way of knowing more about who you are. Generations of young Indian girls have come to the Indian Fine Arts Association to be schooled in Indian classical music. To many Indian parents, this is very much part of a balanced upbringing for an Indian girl. So, despite an interest in classical Western music, Singapore is a nation whose musical heart and soul comes from the measured rhythms of Indian and the distinctive sounds of Malay and Chinese music. So how do you make a success of an orchestra in a nation that lacks a Western musical tradition? It's very interesting. Once I met one uh, very famous uh, French uh, composers, uh, who is now alive, namely my maestro uh, Olivier Messiaens, uh, and uh, he was asking me, you see, where did you come from? And then, uh, uh, you know, and uh, I said, well, I came from a, a region where there is no Western musical traditions, and he said, well, that's very good. There is nothing wrong with it. On the contrary, we in Europe have musical traditions and are, are trying to struggle to get out from, uh, from that 
traditions because it's uh, it's become a kind of a, a burden, you see, and so it's that uh, it dawned on me, you see, that uh, without the traditions, it's not really uh, a disavan disadvantage. It all depends on how that uh, the, the orchestra is being guided to what goal eventually. I think the exciting thing about here is that we are such a melting pot and the challenges that can be presented for anybody setting up a professional orchestra are very exciting. To do it requires an enormous amount of creativity um, and imagination and a will to go to the people. Um, you have to be prepared to schedule programs very, very carefully, to choose your materials, to give um, people in the community doses which are pleasant and enjoyable. Um, that doesn't mean we've got to play down and, you know, play stuff that is, is light all the time, but we must stretch little by little and provide an educational avenue on um, what they already know. And education begins with learning to listen to classical music. To help this process along, music schools like this one hold recitals regularly. Music is an art where, and if you appreciate a great, a great musical work, that means to say you've got to start by uh, knowing how to listen. And that requires a, a knowledge of, a certain knowledge of the history and the style of the composers, things of that kind. And the, the, the broader your knowledge, the wider the exposure to music of all types, the more you can appreciate it. But not everyone has the opportunities these students have of learning to appreciate music. Many observers feel that here, the National Orchestra must lead the way in educating the nation about classical music. There has to be a will to make um, the educational side of the SSO energetically consistent. You can't put a professional orchestra on a pedestal and say, we are a professional orchestra, we are not prepared to come down to the people. That, that, is, that is so wrong. You must take music to the people and um, be aware that ultimately you want them to come back into the concert hall to hear you. That's the goal. Basically, you see, I, what I would like to see that the school also must have a uh, music included in its curriculum, you see. And you cannot uh, uh, rely on SSO to function as an educating body while the basic educations, musical educations, is not done in school. But given the richness of Singapore's local musical heritage, do we really need to learn to appreciate classical Western music? I would say yes, because um, in, Singapore, in Singapore, we cannot isolate ourselves from the rest of the world. It's terribly important that we keep ourselves open to influences of all kinds. In Japan, uh, they pursue both schools uh, almost equally. They enjoy their own music, and they are great lovers of Western classical music. Although they are a very Asian society, probably one of the most Asian of all Asian societies, I think the same thing will, should happen here. While we enjoy our own music, we have a certain uh, anchorage, a certain term of reference, and with that, we should be able to enjoy Western classical music. As with any other new field, orchestra building in Singapore has to grapple with the problem of the nation's limited talent pool. Added to this is the reluctance to consider music a viable career option. Like his colleagues in the SSO, Soon Lee teaches music part-time. Teaching, individual practice, performances with the SSO, all this means that his commitment to music cannot be anything less than total. But like many of his students, Soon Lee didn't think of music as a career option when he was younger. 
besides school work, I have Singapore Youth Orchestra uh, rehearsals. So uh, although I do take up uh, all the examinations, but uh, nothing ever interests me. Even the examiner's uh, comments say that I should take up music. And at that time, I never, never, have, never think about it. Just think that one day music will be a sight besides my major career. Some observers argue that the SSO doesn't do enough to encourage music as a career. There are few opportunities for young local musicians seeking a platform for exposure to perform with the SSO. The only way we're going to convince parents that there is a future is by promoting our own. By saying, you know, we are going to feature these people, we are going to give them every chance, and we are going to provide the jobs. We do give the young people the opportunity to, to, to play with the orchestras. But I mean, uh, the National Orchestra cannot be a guinea pig for any newcomer who has no experience. Uh, you see, and I would like, you see, for the young people to, to have the opportunity to play an orchestra, the youth orchestra should, uh, should, should play its role. And for the young and inexperienced one, they have first to, to play with the youth orchestras, and then uh, afterwards, and when they are t taking, uh, they, are, they intend to take up music seriously, and, uh, well, they go for competition, let's say, you see, then the SSO is going to, 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 to help them and give them the opportunity to, to gain their experience before they entering into international arena. The SSO has provided a focal point to classical music in Singapore. We can now enjoy performances with soloists, concerts, sometimes even in parks. And when a ballet or opera comes to town, there's an orchestra to accompany it. But what measure of success can we say it's attained? I have met all kinds of orchestras, good, very good, and also bad. But I think, uh, you see, if the orchestras hasn't reached to the top very best, I think uh, we can safely say it is a, it is a comparable to with the majority of the orchestra in, uh, in European country. I think just the fact of the Singapore Symphony being here is quite wonderful for Singapore. Um, they have provided a focal point, an impetus, for so much music to happen. You know, they have thrust music forward in a very exciting way. The challenges are to widen that circle of friends who constantly support the SSO and to see many, many more people from all over the place attending, especially, I think, to go to the young. Souvenirs of highlights in his musical career have pride of place in the room where Sun Lee spends time with his music. He says he's a musician very sure of his calling. But what does the future hold for him and other musicians like him? For me, I would hope that one day I can improve even better and better always. And this is, uh, and I think there are futures in all the musicians. Because what I did is I commit myself to teaching and playing the orchestra. And someday you may not, the f I, I'm sure that in the future that the root will come, the, the result of all this, mm. it will influence the next generations. Soon these sentiments echo the SSO's hopes for its future as it continues to chart new directions in playing for a nation.